Earlier this week, the major blockbuster report in the Washington Post on decades of lying about the U.S. war in Afghanistan. We talked about it earlier this week. I really want to reiterate that this is this generation's version of the Pentagon Papers. And Afghanistan is not even in the loop in terms of main media broadcasts. Negotiations between the Trump administration and the Taliban have restarted. Ultimately, there does need to be some type of comprehensive agreement Pakistan needs to stop playing a double game. The U.S. needs to get out. The Afghans need to have their autonomy respected, and the Pakistanis need to have their security respected. But again, there's all of these deeply dysfunctional, incestuous relationships between our military interests there, our intelligence services, the Pakistani intelligence services, realities that are barely talked about here, like the fact that the Ghani government, they cover maybe half of the country, in my understanding. And what exactly even is the Taliban? What's the difference between the Afghan Taliban versus the Pakistani Taliban? What is the difference between people who maybe have some type of international ideology versus essentially indigenous forces resisting occupying, occupying NATO forces? That's what it is at the end of the day. This is Ro Khanna again. He's demanding congressional hearings on uh, this these Afghan papers, which again, it's stunning the extent to which this has not been covered, nor have people from any administration implicated by this, that is namely Bush and Obama uh, and, and Trump too, uh, being questioned on this. I think we have to have some accountability so we don't make the mistake again. Would you support this committee holding hearings on the Afghan papers and calling in front of Congress every official who has misled the American public about whether this war was winnable and all or not, with 2,400 Americans soldiers dead, 775,000 Americans deployed, don't you think people owe this country an explanation? Sure, many of those dead are my friends and maybe some of my former soldiers. Uh, but look, it's, uh, the, it's the committee's responsibility to determine what it has hearings on. I don't think you want the executive branch making that call. Mr. Chairman, I would request that this committee hold hearings on the Afghan papers and call before Congress with subpoena every person who has misled this country. And just like in the Pentagon yes. Papers, I think uh, that should be one of our highest priorities in examining what has come out in that bombshell report. If I may, Mr. Conner, we'll pause your time for the moment. I, I think it's appropriate to have hearings. I will tell you right up front, just to set expectations correctly, I'm not going to call every single witness who has anything to do with this. I do not believe that would be a productive use of the committee's time. Uh, I do think it's something that we should take a look at um, and, and get explanations from, because I agree with the overall point. But I don't want to set unrealistic expectations about how the committee should approach it. So I, I respect your question. I, I respect that, and certainly at least having some of the prominent people come and explain to the American public. Find out who that is. So that's Congressman Adam Smith. Uh, so from the state of Washington, so look, I, okay. I mean, he could fight it on the narrow technicality of, I guess, every single person involved in the bureaucracy, of course, is not going to be called, but the main, but the point here that's obvious is the people in leadership positions who lied about and helped distort this, which is namely everybody need to be held accountable in Congress and ha and be questioned aggressively. Here's uh, Ro Khanna with the follow-up. I just sorry? wanted to point out that he, uh, in his tweet, he says, let's bring Rumsfeld in, which I yeah. liked. Yeah. Let's bring Donald Rumsfeld in. Let's start we with Donald Rumsfeld. We don't need to bring Rumsfeld. the janitors or whatever. No, like, we're not. Right. We don't have to bring in the the junior analysts. Let's bring in. Let's bring in McChrystal. Let's bring in Petraeus. Yeah. Let's bring in Rumsfeld. Let's bring in Panetta. Let's bring in Clinton. Let's yeah. bring in Biden. Let's bring in all of these players. Because this is still going on. Bring in Pelosi. And, and even, Bring in Pelosi. <laughs> so it was a year and a half after yes. the release of the Pentagon Papers that uh, Nixon began withdrawal in, uh, in Vietnam. Do you have any confidence that we'll be out a year and a half from now in Afghanistan? No. Come on. I mean, it's no. crazy. We really need these need to be thorough, thorough here. No. And I think in a lot of the differences, we don't have a monopolistic liberal media yeah. to the extent that we used to when Nixon uh, was around, for better or for worse, but I mean, for worse in this case. And ultimately, like, this is a, a good illustration of why it's important to vote in, you know, midterm elections, because do you think that we would be having this conversation about Afghan papers if 
the Republicans were in control of that. No, but it's also no, but it's also why you need to think with a lot of precision in primary votes, and you need to not accept you know just general pablum on foreign policy because basically nobody is talking about this, and of course it wouldn't happen under the Republicans. Although I will, I will admit, I have to confess, there are certain areas where if you're talking about Yemen, Mike Lee has partnered with Bernie Sanders. You know, if you're talking about uh, there was a working to stop uh, the march to war with Iran, kind of let it. Gates worked with him on it, for God's sake. So there might be certain really narrow areas in a congressional context. And this is your job in Congress. This is not the same. I'm not going to dredge up a dumb old debate. But if you don't see the difference between retweeting some idiot versus doing your job in Congress to partner with people to pass legislation, which is your job. And then conversely, if you have a problem with that, then you don't understand how policy works. In the very narrow area of things like ending the war in Afghanistan, you might see basically real hard right and actual progressive coalition, because that is an area where the quote unquote mainstream broad center is perfectly content with just the endless story changes, dishonesty, and bullshit, uh, because they've built a narrative in their head about why we need to do it yeah. there. And there's a lot of bureaucratic uh, self-interest in perpetuating it. And do you hope that like coalition politics like that continue moving forward in you know in the areas where it's helpful? My point is my my point was that I don't think Mac Thornberry is going to call these hearings. Mac Thornberry is thorough. definitely not going to be calling those hearings. I think there's some areas, whether it's on surveillance, on Patriot Act issues, uh, and things like that, where you you know look to well, I mean he's already in a different basket, but I mean look to a Justin Amash. Don't look, to, you know, because a lot of those issues, they're going to, I mean, look at the Patriot Act. It just got shepherded right through. And, you know, that's how those votes go. And that's so you do need a different coalition to deal with them. That's, that's political reality. Oh God, I remember, I'm, I'm old guys. And I remember uh, debating a kid in class about the Patriot Act when I was in high school. Wow. Yeah. And his argument was that, um, oh, a lot of these provisions are going to sunset anyway, so it's fine to have it for now. And my argument was, no, they're not. And like, I I didn't know a whole lot about a lot when I was in high school, but I was very sure that this was going to be very sinister for a very long time. So I take no pleasure in saying this, but in your face, Brian Craigie. Yeah. 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 I was going to ask for a name. (laughs) You're calling from an 801 area code. Who are you? Where are you calling from?